Uh, why is corrosion linked to asset integrity? <laughs> well, because asset integrity and asset integrity management is about giving yourself assurance that you're, it is safe for you to go to sleep at night, basically. Um, it is giving you the guarantees that prove to you and to your shareholders that you are not about to have a failure of that system. Now, um, why do things have an asset life to begin with? They have a life because of corrosion. Usually what we do is we, we don't control corrosion completely. We, it's, it's usually not cost effective. <coughs> Sorry. Usually not cost effective to stop corrosion completely. What we do is we turn around and say we will reduce the rate of corrosion to an acceptable low rate of corrosion. And because we accept that lowish rate of corrosion, it means that we automatically give something a design life. And we often do that without even realizing that we are limiting these things to a design life. But really, this is what we do. We limit things to a design life. Now, in, on day one, you pretty much expect your last. But who's to say that you've done the calculations correct? There are so many assumptions that go into a design life. What is the assumed corrosion rate? What is the assumed? And you don't know if it's going to follow that. So you have to monitor what you're doing to make sure that it's living up to expectations. Now, here's the problem. You cannot disassemble your system and inspect the entire thing. You know, pipeline 300 kilometers long. You can't dig it out of the ground and have a good look at the whole thing every year because it's just it's, it's unfeasible and it's uneconomic. So what we have to do is we have to come up with a system of controlling how much inspection we do. We can't inspect all of it all the time. We have to plan the amount of inspection to do and do just enough. I mean, the other thing, you know, I mean, sending an intelligent pig down a pipeline can cost you in excess of a million dollars. You're not going to do it every six months. You need to decide how much needs to be done. And that's why asset integrity management is about giving you that assurance that you know it's safe, but you couple that with risk-based inspection. So that with the risk-based inspection, you say to yourself, this section of pipeline is the most hazardous. The consequences of failure are too great. This one we inspect more. This pipeline, piece of pipeline we don't inspect so much. Those risk-based inspections are put into the asset integrity management. And this is but um, the only reason why we have, ever have to replace anything, the only reason you know, I mean, the main reason why we have to worry about failure of materials is usually due to corrosion. Um, you could say asset integrity management, yes, if you, if you overpressure your system, well, that's obvious, isn't it? You've got pressure gauges for that. Um, I reckon about 75, 80% of most failures have, a, have corrosion in, as their base cause. The corrosion weakens the material, and then other things happen as well to, to make the situation worse. So hopefully that's explained that. Which is the most commonly used method of corrosion control? Dead simple, coatings, slap, works great. We reckon um, around about 70% of corrosion control costs are down to the painting, painting cycle. Um, and remember, we're painting. It's not. It's the cost of surface preparation, applying the coatings, inspecting the application process, testing the resultant coating. All of those things have to be done. 
and that is the cost. Um, the other 30% is the cathodic protection and inhibitors. Um, you know, it'd be great if we could apply cathodic protection. everything we wouldn't have any well, we'd have very little in the way of corrosion problems unfortunately cathodic protection only applies to submerged environments buried structures in the soil in concrete or in the sea yes you can do CP in concrete there's a nice uh, system where you can actually apply cathodic protection to the rebar that's in concrete another story um, the inside of here's an interesting one though. Um, the inside of pipelines, we very rarely paint the inside of pipelines. So the question is, well, why not? Because if you painted it, you would protect yourself from corrosion. The answer is, pipeline comes in 40 foot lengths, and once you've finished, um, once you get those 40 foot lengths, you join them together. How do you join them? By welding. And the welding from the outside would destroy any coating on the inside. So it's those field joints, particularly the inside field joints, that means we can't coat the inside of a pipeline. Because if you coated it and painted it, but of course you didn't coat the field joints, well, the field joints would corrode at a normal rate. So you'd know exactly where the corrosion would be every 40 foot. So what's the point of what's the point of applying the coating at all? There isn't any. Um, there are interestingly there are new technology solutions coming out. There's a, a guy in Saudi who's investigating the use of a robotic crawler that can travel down the inside of a pipeline and can then f and then can apply a field coating to the inside of the weld. Strategy technology, I don't know how well it's doing, but it's certainly a possibility. Okay, next one. What is the biggest challenge in getting corrosion control right? <laughs> Simply knowing what is causing the corrosion. Um, it's surprising, but very few people actually know why they've got corrosion issues, um, because they don't do the failure analysis. Um, and of course, if you don't do that, then you don't know what's the best remedial approach. The other one is knowing what techniques are available, either available in the market or in, available regionally. What, have, what expertise have you got that you can rely on regionally? Obviously, you don't want to fly experts halfway around the world to solve your problem. It'll, they will just ramp up the cost. Um, and the other side of it as well is the cost associated with it. Um, corrosion control, if you're not careful, you can spend vast amounts of money on it, but you aren't necessarily getting the control that is sensible. So getting a smart level of corrosion control is, takes a, is a fine balance. Using the right coating. And there must be 30, 40 different coating systems available. Which one is best for your system? Well, doing the testing, and very few people do the testing. So, you know, do comparative tests. Find out which one is the best for your environment. And don't just use a standard, industry standard test. Design a test that closely matches your 